Entitled mother accuses daycare workers of bullying her bad child. I really didn't expect my first post to blow up so much. Thank all of you. I thought I'd share another story, but with a much worse kid and even a more entitled mother. The in-school daycare that I work at does a summer program where we keep kids for a whole 12 hours. Some days we take them on field trips or we'll create fun activities for the kids to do during the day. There were quite a few kids that were difficult, but there was this one who could not control his anger. This one time, he pushed a little girl down for not sharing her gummies with him, and when I tried to go talk to him, he ran out the front doors of the school. I had to chase him down in the parking lot, bring him inside, and ride him up. At first, his mother was really understanding, and she explained to us that he had ODD, Oppositional Defiance Disorder, and that she would talk to him about his behavior. As the days went on though, this kid would accumulate more and more write-ups from hitting, breaking things, swearing, you name it. Although I was the teacher that was writing him up, since he was in my class, he absolutely loved me. Every time he would get into trouble or start doing something bad, I would talk to him and explain what he was doing was wrong. I would give him a hug and tell him that we would work on it and everything would be okay. There was this one day when he was busy doing something with other kids that he snapped, he was playing outside and had hit another kid in the face with a basketball, on purpose. The other kid's nose was bleeding everywhere and the boy got into trouble. The boy ran inside and crawled under a table and was screaming, All of these teachers here are freaking idiots. I hate it here. For my boss, this was the final straw. She gave him a write-up, and since this was his sixth serious write-up, he got kicked out of our daycare program. She called his mom and told her that he was no longer in the program and that she had to come pick him up. The mother came in a few hours later and her face was as almost as red as her hair was. She screamed at my boss that we were singling out her child and bullying him. She said that no other child gets written up as much as hers and she accused us of not knowing how to handle his ODD. 1. We aren't allowed to tell other parents about children's behavior unless it is their child and 2. We cheat every child the same. I don't know what she expected us to do about his defiance disorder. Did she want us to just let whatever he was doing slide? We can't just ignore when a child is punching other children and breaking school property. Plus, this woman never told us what to do when his disorder was making him act up. The entitled mother grabbed her kid, called my boss a tramp, and slammed the glass door on her way out. A couple minutes later, she came back in and demanded we give her her money back. My boss explained to her that she would have to go to the school board office and talk to the people there about it because we didn't have the authority to give her any money. She stormed out once more, slamming the glass door again. I really, really wish that door would have broken because it would have been hilarious if she had to pay for it to be fixed after her little tantrum. I still see her kid around the school sometimes, and every time he sees me, he gets so excited. Miss OP, he says, and he hugs me. I really wish there was more we could have done for the kid, but he had over 200 other kids we have to care for, so we can't just sit down and work with him all day. I can only hope that he has learned to control his anger rather than lashing out at summer camp. I hope everyone enjoys this story. I'm sorry if it wasn't too long. Let me know if you want more. And our next story was posted by user Wings of Spun Sugar, titled, She Would Rather Risk Killing Her Child Than Be Wrong. I was sitting around reading stories here, and I realized I had a perfect story. The entitled parent is my mother, and her insane need to be right. When I was younger, my father had a massive heart attack, the result being that we had to change the family diet to something more healthy, heart healthy. Lots of people go to seafood for heart healthy diets because of all the healthy oils and fats, so shellfish and fish were a large part of the household. One night, after we had a shrimp pasta, I started getting this weird feeling all over my body. I felt like my whole body was on fire and like my nose was stuffed, so I had to take deep breaths through my mouth. I looked at my arms and giant red splotches started to appear all over me. At this point, I called my mother over and exclaimed that I must be allergic to shrimp. She looks at me and replies, It doesn't look that bad. Just go to sleep. The entire night, I tossed and turned, unable to catch my breath or get away from the relentless heat oozing off of my skin. 
I decided that day that I would never have shrimp again. The next couple times my mother made a meal with shrimp, I would politely decline and make food for myself. Even though I made my own food from scratch, I was still feeling strange after the meal. It was starting to get to the point that I would be gasping for air, barely able to swallow and wheezing. I assumed that being in the same room when they cooked shrimp might be enough to make me feel sick. I mentioned this to my mother and got an irritated sigh and eye roll. You are not allergic to shrimp. So the next time dinner with shrimp rolls around, I just don't say anything. The symptoms come on as usual, but I just kept it to myself. Apparently the lack of mentioning how bad I felt was interpreted as me admitting I was fine. My mother walks over all proud of herself and sits down next to me. See? I've been rubbing shrimp in your utensils before you eat for a while and you're perfectly fine. Needless to say, I eventually went full anaphylaxis. Unfortunately from something other than shrimp while I was a student teaching and had to go see an allergist. After my allergy panel, the doctor declared a very long list of foods, plants, and molds I was allergic to. Guess what was on the deathly allergic list? Shrimp. My mother's reaction when I pointed it out? She shrugged and said, oops. That was about a decade ago, and I still can't eat food she's prepared. She just tested me again, with onions this time, just last year. She tells me there are no spices on things, and then remembers when my throat starts closing up, and I have to devour Benadryl. The worst part is, my father knows and doesn't warn me. So that's my story of my mother preferring being correct over me being alive. I actually have a ton more of these if anyone finds my random childhood stories interesting. I might post more. Thanks for reading. Edit. Oh my goodness, I posted this before taking a nap and woke up to all of this support and concern. I appreciate it all so very much. To put some fears aside, I am no longer living with my parents and are on light contact with them. My husband takes my allergies very seriously. He doesn't even allow them in the house, so I am safe from the poisonings. Also, I know a lot of people don't understand why I'm in contact at all. The cycle of abuse is a crazy thing, especially when it's all you know. You think it's normal until you escape. I'm in a massive amounts of therapy and working on my mental and physical health. Thank you for the gold, kind stranger. Edit 2. I posted another story about being paid for babysitting with a story from my mother about how I was a happy baby. I sadly had no idea how to link things or I'd put in here. Sorry about that. And our next story was posted by user Shut Up Samurai, titled Holiday Karen, Long But Gratifying. TLDR at the end, I'm also on mobile. First post here, I am fuming, but willing to provide context. First, I've been working with children for a long time. Did you know even the most excitable toddlers are willing to communicate politely if asked? This is why I'm easily aggravated when adults are unable to compose themselves in public. Second, I've been having issues with my ID being lost in the mail. It has been difficult to iron out and I've been running around for months reordering them. I was at the post office today, mid-December, yikes, to speak with the supervisor. I was lucky to have arrived when I did as a huge surge of people trying to ship holiday packages showed up almost immediately after. I am about 10 to 15 people behind and I am in a bit of a hurry, but willing to wait because I can see employees scrambling around trying to help customers. Always plan ahead, y'all. I chatted a bit about the long line and holiday plans with the girl ahead of me. This is a common among extroverts in the US. I suddenly notice someone walking very close to me on the left side. As soon as there's a couple of feet between myself and the girl in front of me, the wild Karen steps even closer and attempts to casually squeeze between us. I ignore her and close the gap before she can cut in line, which again is extremely long. She is loudly complaining to her teenage son about how she only has 10 minutes. I told random name I'd have it shipped last week. Her son says that they're already late and they should come back tomorrow. So and so will be fine. I am now third in line. She huffs and begins to walk parallel to me with a huge box. Again, trying to nonchalantly squeeze in. I try to close the two foot gap, but she shoves ahead and I run into her by accident. 
She looks back at me now and frowns. Excuse you? Her son loudly whispering, Mom, let's just go! During this process, she has also run into the girl originally in front of me with her huge box. The girl turns around and is surprised to see a random lady where I used to be. Karen to the girl, I'm in a huge hurry, can you just move? The girl raises her eyebrows and starts to say something, but the clerk calls her forward. She gives me the yikes eyes and heads over to the desk. I say nothing because I'm not trying to make any more of a scene. Karen is called up to the desk at the same time I'm called to an adjacent one. The clerk takes my name and directs me to stand by a door and wait for a supervisor. I head over and can overhear Karen freaking out because the cost of shipping her giant package is more than $40. She demands to speak to a manager, which is a shocker, and the clerk tells her to hang on for a moment. The only supervisor will be at the desk in a few minutes. The supervisor, who's very nice and named Sherry, opens the top of the split door, calls my name, and I begin explaining my issue. Karen leaves her son and package, storms over and interrupts. Karen, I have been waiting for 20 minutes, total BS by the way, and I need a supervisor right now. My package, Sherry, cutting her off says, I'll be over in just a moment. Go ahead and wait at the desk please. Karen starts to argue, but OG Sherry tells her again to wait at the desk. Karen then grabs her package, ignores the clerk telling her to wait, and steps up right behind me as Sherry takes notes and copies her information for me. I thank her profusely when I finish and wish her a happy holiday. As I'm walking away, Karen frowns and starts telling Sherry her sob story. Sherry says for the third time to wait at the desk. Karen whips around, but by now, the clerk has a case of the frickets and has called someone else to his desk. He tells her to go back to the back of the line, which has only grown. Sherry takes the brief moment Karen looked away to slam the top part of the door shut. I left before the shrieking started. Our next story was posted by user Alexander23, titled, Parent Threatens a 10 year old to be friends with her daughter. I have thought long and hard about posting this, because this was more than a decade ago, and obviously my memory is a bit rusty, but with all of these stories out there, I felt that this could be relevant. Backstory. When I started 4th grade, there were a lot of new kids entering my class. Me and my friend group befriended some of them, and for a while things were fine. But one of our new friends, let's call her entitled kid, behaved odd to say the least. She was an extremely sensitive kid, and anything could set her off. I remember telling her that I loved my mum's pancakes more than any other pancakes in the world, and she considered this to be a personal insult to her mum who had not even been mentioned in that statement. She always wanted to be told that she was the best at everything, and when she wasn't, well, every time she became upset, and when she did, she would run off and lock herself into a bathroom and refuse to come out until all of us had apologized and told her how amazing she was. It was exhausting. When this happened at her house, her entitled mum and her entitled dad would berate us for having upset her and call us terrible bullies. Each time, we were forced to do something for her, such as give away a toy or something like that. We were just kids, so we went along with it for a while, but it was truly toxic behaviour. Anyways, there came a point where we could no longer put up with any of her behaviour. This was when she had sent us a list of things that we needed to change about ourselves for her to want to be our friend. It went along the lines of, laugh differently, don't defend yourself if I hit you, which she did that a lot, stop drawing because she thought we were better than her, don't ever spend time with each other without me. Did I tell you that Entitled Kid was Entitled AF? We refused all of these requests and finally spoke up about the this to our parents who agreed that we should all terminate this toxic friendship. Everything was okay for a while, even though Entitled Kid was upset about us not wanting to change for her sake. But then, her parents found out about what had happened. They attempted to contact each and every single one of us, and have a talk with us. We were freaking 10 years old, and these adults were trying to get our personal numbers, and so on. All of us but one managed to not listen to the parents. The one who did? Well, 
Entitled Kid managed to talk to her and told her that if she didn't become her friend and get her back into the friendship group, she would kill herself. Entitled Kid also wanted all of us to change our abhorrent behaviours and do the things on her list. My friend was noticeably upset and didn't want to keep talking, but then Entitled Mother got into contact with her. Entitled Mother told her that it would be her fault if Entitled Kid killed herself and that she needed to be a better person. My friend was freaking 10 years old. No matter what our parents and ourselves told the Entitled Mother and Entitled Dad, they would insist that it wasn't unreasonable of Entitled Kid to want to change us because she's special and they're bullies. I don't know exactly what happened, but I'm fairly sure that the school nurse got involved and told Entitled Mother to back off this 10-year-old child. The friendship ended, but to this day I am dumbfounded that parents would raise their child like this and actually support the child's behaviour. And our next story was posted by user Tired Pandastic, titled Entitled Parent Tourist Thinks He Should Be Allowed to Commit Antiquities Theft. I'm fully aware that this story will sound absurd, it also requires some context. I live in Greece, and while in college, I worked part-time as a tour guide on the Acropolis. I have several stories from that time, but I'll stick to the most ridiculous and sad question mark one? I am bilingual, so I got to work with a lot of English-speaking tourist groups. A lot of groups often cause problems for guides and sites from refusing to take our advice and don hats, and a generous application of sunscreen. The number of pale people I've seen suffer sunburns, sunstrokes, and even heat strokes up on the rock is nearly astronomical. To coming to the tour hungover, or even straight off drunk, to pestering everyone about selfies and photographs, to just not listening to the rules of the sites. There's a lot of ways to make your guides very angry at you, though we always try to be polite about it. I hate to be blunt, but Americans tend to be some of the worst groups. Not all of them, mind you, but a lot of them cause guides a lot of trouble. I was taking a group of American tourists off a cruise ship, probably one of the most common groups at the time I was working, on this standard Acropolis tour. It's mid-July, so it's baking hot up there, even though it's early in the morning. After 11ish AM, it becomes nigh unbearable if you are not used to it. So I have a few cranky, overheating folks, but I like to think my lecture is at least keeping them engaged enough, as most people are interested, polite, and asking questions. So far so good. I tended to let people have a few moments at each point of interest to grab photos and ask me questions after I'd finished my spiel. During one of these moments, one of the members of the group discreetly tries to whisper to me, I'm used to it. Most people ask for the bathroom like this. This lady, however, points out a particular gentleman who was with his wife and daughter, and mentioned he'd been talking about taking a souvenir, and she didn't think he meant gift shop stuff. Now, this sort of thing gets any guide on high alert. Antiquity theft is an old and sordid problem in Greece, and nobody in their right mind looks kindly upon this sort of thing. I decide to keep my eye on the gentleman as much as I can just in case. Inwardly, I am praying that he isn't as dumb as I think he will be. Things are quiet for the next two stops until we come to a location near the Parthenon, which is where I normally give some information about the restoration process and current preservation research. The location is in fact right by the active restoration site and has a lot of stone pieces lying around either a waiting process slash preservation, or ready to be hauled for placement back on the monument. Most pieces are really big, but some are fairly small sized chunks of marble. Some are carved in a particular way. It is a mix of original pieces of the Parthenon and new stone carted over to replace bits that have been destroyed. After my spiel, I allow them to take time to ask questions and take photos. While I'm answering a boy's question, out of the corner of my eye, I see a gentleman bend down as if to tie up his shoelace and scoop up a piece of marble, which he shoves into his cargo pants' pocket, assuming he's some master sleight of hand. I immediately approach him, and to the best of my memory, here is how it went. I say, Excuse me, sir. Please return the stone you took to where you found it, 
This is an active archaeological and restoration site. No artifacts are to be removed. Oh, um, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Sir, you understand perfectly. I'm a native speaker. You picked up a stone from the restoration workshop area. You need to put it back immediately. I, I didn't take anything. Sir, I saw you pick up a piece of marble and put it in your pocket. Please put it back. Otherwise, it constitutes antiquities theft and vandalism of an archaeological site, and I will be forced to call site security, who will then contact the police. At this point, fortunately, the lady who first brought him to my attention pipes up that she too saw him take it and kindly advises to just put it back. All this time, the lady that I presume is his wife has just been impatiently waiting for the group to move on. A young man about 17 or so that I presume is their son has whipped out his phone, and it looks like he wants nothing to do with this mess. Oh my god, are you really going to make a fuss over a little piece of stone? No one's gonna miss it. I bet people take crap from this place all the time. It's like the Berlin Wall. I'm really angry at this point. I very much wanted to snap at him that he may not understand the cultural and emotional value that the Acropolis represents for Greece, because he comes from a place where 100 years counts as ancient. Looking back, that is obviously unfair to the rest of the group, who look quite ashamed and are awkwardly trying not to get involved. So I say to him, Sir, this place is a site of priceless historical, cultural, and archaeological value, and every bit of it counts as an artifact. It also is an active restoration site, and that stone is part of what's left of an already damaged and pillaged building. Please put it back, or I will have to inform security. I've already taken my phone out to ring my supervisor, and he says to me, I'm done. I want to leave. I paid an overpriced ticket, and this is how I get treated? I'm leaving! Sir, you have to remain here. Security's on their way. To make a long story short, security caught him just as he was trying to leave, and the police were called. I asked the lady who first pointed him out to confirm my story, and thankfully she did. From what I heard, the man was led off with a severe warning and banned from the Greater Acropolis site. The cops who showed up to escort him and his family to the police station were pretty stern with them, and all they did was whine that they'd miss their cruise and the rest of the day trips. I worked there for a couple of years after that incident till I graduated, and like I said, plenty of stories, but none this wild. Edit. Sorry for the omission. The marble piece was returned. When they detained him, the security guys got the piece back. A member of the site's restoration workforce returned it to the site and cautioned us guides to be more aware. I did not get in much trouble, fortunately, since my supervisor had proof that I handled it well. Our next story was posted by user Himabi, titled, Entitled Mother Tries Dragging Another Child Out of a Shopping Cart. So, I work in a big old supermarket which I'll be referring to as Shopco for ease and my lack of effort. This is not a story that involves me, but it came directly from a friend of mine who is in the same department as me. Please note, this is written on mobile, so cut me some slack if it's not written perfectly. Some info you need to know about Shopco is that we have three different types of trolleys, aka shopping carts for you Americans. We have a very small trolley, which is used by people for quick visits. We have large trolleys with room for the end for wine and bottles, but most people let their children stand in there despite warnings not to. And finally, we have a different type of small trolley, except this one is painted red and has a fake car attached to it with a fake steering wheel and a real, albeit quiet, horn. Could be... coals, maybe? The story revolves around the third type of trolley. My friend has been working at Shopco for a couple of years longer than me, and so has seen just about everything, but even this surprised him. He was just leaving the store after a pretty long shift, and was just buying a few things. While he was paying, he saw a typical Karen outside holding her bundle of joy, entitled Brat is EB, by his arm. He thought nothing of it at the time, and went outside to go to his car. As soon as he went into the parking lot, Entitled Mother pulled him to the side and began asking him where all the trolley carts are. 
My little angel has been dying to go in it all morning. He explained that if there were none of the trolleys outside, then they were most likely being used or getting repaired and cleaned, as little kids tend not to keep their hands to themselves, to the trolleys are all quite beaten. This apparently pissed Entitled Mother off and she began demanding that he gets her baby a car trolley right now or I will go in and take one. He explained how that was the worst possible move she could make, but she was having none of that back chatter. At this point, he explained how Entitled Mother darted her head towards the main entrance. He described it as when a cat is staring at a bird, but creepier. The Entitled Mother then began to make her way towards another mother and her child, who were just leaving the store. They were using one of those car trolleys and simply sealed their fate. My friend began to turn and leave, assuming the Entitled Mother would simply take the trolley when the other mother, OM, and other mother's child, OMC, were done using it. It wasn't until he heard a child scream that he knew that he was wrong. He turned and saw the entitled brat pushing his way inside the trolley before the other mother's child could even try and get out. And obviously, at this point, other mother's child didn't want to. So the two began fighting. Other mother tried to get entitled brat off of her son to little success. And since she tried to stop entitled brat from getting what he wants, entitled mother flipped out. She began pulling other mother's child by the arm to trying to pull him out of the trolley and screaming at other mother and her child about how she was going to sue entitled mother for touching my baby. At this point, the security guy who works at the front of the store ran out and split the fight up. And after hearing from both sides, as well as a few witnesses what had happened, it was decided that the police were going to be called to deal with the situation. Entitled mother ended up getting banned from the store for life and the other mother apparently decided to press charges, but we don't know what became of the situation after that. Uh, if I find out, and if anyone is interested, I'll happily update this with the findings. I tried uploading this to CPL months ago, but I didn't have the comment comma and totally forgot to re-upload it. And our last story was posted by user Worrell, titled, Entitled Dad Put His Own Kid in the Hospital. My parents and I used to coach and umpire at the local rec center. My parents were coaching my younger sister's baseball team one year, and they had Entitled Dad's son on their team. I used to go to practices, and even umpired a few games. So I knew Entitled Dad thought his son was going to be the next biggest baseball star. His kid was nice, but basically just a mediocre player. Entitled Dad would quote-unquote help my parents with the practices and the pre-game warm-ups, but really only focus on his son. He would yell, and I mean scream, at my parents if they didn't play his kid enough. This was a league just for fun and exercise, so they tried to give everyone an equal amount of playtime. He constantly yelled at the umpires, myself included. We even overheard him yelling at his son after one game, because he didn't perform as well as he thought he could and should. Every year my parents did a parents versus kids at the end of the season. My brother and I would umpire, but it was basically just for fun. The parents would pitch to their kids, and then would fumble the ball or miss throws so their kids would all pretty much get a home run every time. Not Entitled Dad though. When it was Entitled Dad's son's turn to hit, Entitled Dad actually struck him out, only parent to do so. The kid would then pitch to their parents, and the parents would either let them dramatically strike them out, or bunt, or hit crowners, so their kids could tag them out, or chase them around the bases, etc. Well, Entitled Dad gets up to bat, and his son steps up to pitch to him. Big smile on son's face, it was his turn to strike his dad out. He threw an easy pitch, and Entitled Dad hit the ball with all of his strength. The ball beelined right back to his son, and hit him full force in the face. I was the first base umpire, so I had a side view of it all. This ball hit him so hard, it knocked him off of his feet, and sent his arms and legs flailing. It was literally like a cartoon. We all ran over, Entitled Dad included, and his son is crying, dripping blood from his nose and mouth, and he spits out at least three of his front teeth into his dad's hand. 
we made sure that he wasn't dying, and rather than calling an ambulance, his dad scoops him up and takes him to his car to take him to the hospital, apologizing the whole time. This kind of put a damper on the game, so we called the game there. Luckily for the kid, if you can count it as lucky, his upper mouth slash teeth had taken most of the hit. He needed emergency dental surgery to remove some broken pieces of the teeth still left in his mouth, but all of the broken and lost teeth were not adult teeth. So the doctors said his adult teeth should grow in a few years, but he would have a gap until they did. He didn't have any broken facial or nasal bones, so just some bad bruising for a few weeks. I don't even think he had a concussion either. The kid was actually back the next year, with Entitled Dad acting exactly the same way. I even yelled at my mum when she was umpiring a game, and called his son out, but luckily they were not on our team. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode today. Tell me what you thought of this. Um, just happy uploading a few episodes right now. Sorry for the big delay again. You know what I'm like. Um, yeah, let's have a chat in the comments. Tell me how your day's been. Tell me how you're feeling. And I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Have a good one. Bye.